Hello and welcome to the exciting world of commercial radio. My name is Sharita and I'll be your lecturer. And before I get into a little bit more about what this module is about, just a bit of my background. So I come from radio. I've been in the radio space for quite a number of years um, in different facets of it. So I've been in front of the mic and I've been behind the scenes as a station manager. I've also been on the other side of it where I've worked as the managing director of an advertising company for radio stations specifically. And currently I run a business called Media Beat. I'm extremely passionate about radio, hence why I'm here um, for the subject. I believe that you shouldn't be in this industry if you're not passionate about radio. And I'm one of those people that live and breathe radio every single day, something I'll probably do until the day I die. So, um, Radio is my field completely. Let's take a look at what we'll be getting into in the first module. So the first module uh, will be six lectures, okay? Um, and that will be around commercial radio landscape and the commercial and commercial station management. So that's what we'll be looking at at the beginning. This module will cover commercial radio in South Africa, um, identifying and elaborating on programming and content, sales, revenues, and marketing as the three pillars of radio. Uh, we'll go into a little bit of the organizational structures of a radio station, and we'll give a brief overview of the duties, the roles, and the responsibilities of each position within a commercial radio station. Some important info for you to note is you can find my email address on call campus, but I'll also, but it's also at the start of this uh, PowerPoint. Okay, so it's purely Sharita at mediapeat.co.za. You can email me at any time with your questions, and I'll respond to you quite quickly. I'm very quick on my emails. Um, alternatively, there's a Telegram group that I'd like you to join. If you have any other questions, it can be um, you can ask them there so that we can just get in touch or keep in touch with each other. Um, I'll also be seeing you once a week, uh, virtually that is. So we'll have one live lecture a week where you can also ask me whatever you want, but the idea is that we'll catch up and go through um, the work that you've already done to make sure that you're up to speed with everything um, that should be done, okay? With regards to your textbooks, for this class you need the textbook Next Level Radio, by Grant Nash and Justine Cullinan. Okay, it's very important that you get that textbook, seeing as every single lecture will have a piece you'll need to read through that's in the textbook. So for the time being, this is the way that we will be doing the lectures. Okay, so every class will be uploaded on Call Campus. So the PowerPoint will be uploaded weekly. Um, the roadmap will be uploaded so you can see what you should be working on for every class as well as the video, okay? So there will be a YouTube link uploaded for every video just to make things a little bit easier for you. And with that, let's get into your first lecture. I'm sure commercial radio has made up quite a big portion of your radio listening experience throughout the years. I mean, growing up for me, commercial radio was a really big part of my life. Whenever I got into a car or whenever we switched on the radio at, the home, at home, it would have been commercial radio stations that we would have been listening to, albeit different types of commercial stations. It's still all the commercial radio stations. So as mentioned, there is my um, email address for you if you need to know anything at any point. What we'll be looking at during this lesson today is the radio landscape. So page two to five. So it's not a lot of reading that you need to do. So commercial radio is one of the types of radio stations that we get in South Africa. This industry is divided into three services, however. Do you know what the others are? If you had to guess, except for commercial radio, what are the others? So what we get in South Africa is what's called public service radio commercial radio and community radio. Under community radio is also where you find campus radio stations, but the license that they received through CASA, which I'll chat a bit more about, um, is a community radio station license. Where does radio come from? Where did radio start? Um, I mean, radio and TV, we all know had to start somewhere. Um, both started in the 1900s, but when and how? What was, what was the... Um, what is the history behind it? When we look specifically at South Africa, the first radio broadcast took place in 1923. So that's almost a decade ago that the first radio station was founded. 
At that point, there were three licenses issued um, within South Africa. So one in Johannesburg, one in Cape Town and one in Durban. The one in Johannesburg is the first one that went live, and that was through the South African Railways in December of that year. The next one was run through the Cape and Peninsula Broadcasting Association in September of the following year, and the Durban organization began broadcasting in December of that year. A couple of years later, in April 1927, the African Broadcasting Corporation, or ABC, was, was formed. So instead of the, the government taking ownership of these three stations, they were the responsibility of the ABC, which worked for quite a while. As you can see, they had worked for nine years, but um, the ABC struggled financially. And in 1936, this company was dissolved. And in its place, the South African Broadcasting Corporation, aka the SABC, as we know it today, was created. So what happened is the SABC bought all the licenses from um, ABC, they began to broadcast in 1936. Seven years later, in 1943, the SABC la launched its first African language service in Isizulu, Isikosa, and Sesutu. Today, the SABC broadcasts through 19 publicly owned radio stations. If you thought they only owned the 11 official language radio stations, they don't. They have the commercially run radio stations as well. And then there's a few others um, included in those 19. TV only arrived in 1976, meaning that for over 50 years, South Africans relied solely on radio stations for news, entertainment, and to a large extent, their education. If we look at the radio listenership today within South Africa, 90% um, of South Africans still listen to radio. The average TSL, TSL meaning time spent listening, so the average time that someone sits and listens to radio is more than four hours daily, and 45% of listeners listen to about 20 hours of radio weekly. That's a lot of radio listening, okay? That's a very high amount. So radio is a prolific and powerful medium of communication, regardless of economic status or geography. We focus a bit on the evolution of South African radio. Currently in South Africa, there are more than 300 licensed radio stations, okay? And this still excludes the internet-based stations. Of these over 300, 22 of them are privately owned commercial radio stations run by business owners to deliver a profit. Um, so that is literally, that is the aim of a commercial radio station at the end of the day is to provide a profit to their business owners and board. And then 19 of these uh, over 300 stations are owned by the SABC, as mentioned, which is SA's public broadcaster. As a result of its funding model, the SABC is dependent on advertising revenue, even though its only shareholder is the Minister of Communications. The SABC can also extract a portion of its revenue from license fees, known to South Africans as our TV licenses. This word is a little bit misleading as it supplies a license holder with access to all of the SABC's radio and TV services. So when you go and buy a television and you complain because you have to pay a, a TV license fee to be able to buy a TV, you're also at that point paying for you to be able to listen to the 19 SABC radio stations. So that money, that 200 odd, whatever it might be by now, um, that you pay per year, is for all the SABC um, stations. So in essence, the SABC is not, as most South Africans might believe, a state broadcaster. Rather, only about 3% of its funding is secured directly from government. And these funds are specifically allocated to the government's spearheaded project, projects, usually in the health and education sector. So apart from these 22 privately owned commercial stations, and the 19 SABC radio stations, the rest of them are all community radio stations. Community radio stations are self-funded through various types of advertising activities or by donations uh, from individuals or commercial finance supporters or interest groups, um, both inside and outside of South Africa. A lot of them rely on funding from the MDDA also. The MDDA is South Africa's Media Development and Diversity Agency. So they fund a series of radio stations on a yearly basis. If these radio stations are not able to 
sufficiently sustain themselves. Many of the South African community radio stations are registered Section 21 organizations, which means that they are non-profit organizations. Uh, community radio stations are widely managed and staffed by volunteers specifically, which means their operation costs are normally quite low, um, much lower than the commercial radio stations operational costs. As mentioned earlier, radio licenses are granted by ICASA. You don't need to know this yet, but there are two licenses that are granted. One is called a class license and one is called a spectrum license. Spectrum being the footprint of the radio station. ICASA stands for the Independent Communications Authority of South Africa. They are an independent body set up by the government to develop and deliver universal access to broadcast services uh, to South Africa. So they are responsible for monitoring um, the broadcast and communications industry and enforcing compliance among communications authority, um, organizations. To be able to do this, ICASA must continually participate in the developing, updating and passing of rules and regulations as well as different policies in the communications um, space. So not only, not only does ICASA issue licenses, they also ensure universal service and access. And we mentioned monitoring the, the industry. They also hear disputes. If you have any disputes that you want to bring to them, the big thing is the planning, controlling and managing of the frequency spectrum. And then they also protect customers from unfair business practices. South Africa's spectrum is extremely full. We don't really have space for any more radio stations, which is why ICASA brought in a moratorium on licenses a couple of years back. ICASA does, however, have a new plan, and they are currently busy testing some of these modules. What they're looking at at the moment is taking the frequency, so the airwaves, literally, and converting them into digital pockets. So in essence, they are converting them into data so that you can then listen to your radio, your favorite radio stations digitally. What this means is, this means that there's going to be a lot more frequency space available that they can utilize for other things in the future, okay? The new digital terrestrial television, as it's called, so DTT, includes both digital audio broadcasting, which is DAB, and digital radio mondial, DRM. They're currently testing, as I've mentioned, DAB within South Africa to see if it works by running the FM radio station. So no stations have been taken away um, at the same time as that station via DAB. So for instance, you can listen to 947 on FM or via, if you have a, a little Bluetooth uh, thing that's connected to DAB or via that. As I'm sure you can imagine, there are a few struggles around these plans and they have been postponed on several, several occasions due to a number of issues predominantly surrounding the cost and the legal standards of government subsidized set top boxes, so STBs. STB will be the decoding device that businesses and households need in order for them to be able to access this digital signal used to broadcast from radio and television stations. Um, so as I mentioned, I have a little JBL speaker box that's got um, DAB included. And this thing is not very cheap. So you can imagine if we needed to get set top boxes for everyone, it's quite an expensive expedition. Also, the rollout of DTT is time consuming because each household and business must have the set-top box first before analog broadcasting can essentially be switched off. So the plan at the end of the day is to, to stop using FM and only use the digital terrestrial television via the set-top boxes. If they don't wait until everyone has one of these devices first before switching off the FM signals, people will lose access to the radio and television stations completely. On top of this, we sit with corruption issues with regards to the production and the procurement of these set-top boxes. 
So it might still be quite a while before we're actually at the point of being able to enroll these uh, government subsidized, remember, set-top boxes to South Africa. Regardless of whether or not a station is owned by the government, South African radio stations operate on commercial business principles and operational practices. In order to generate an income, radio stations use marketing strategies to attract listeners. The content that we put out on air, so the broadcasting content, is seen as the product of the radio station, designed to continually draw and sustain listenership. How our radio stations plan their operations is with financial obligations in mind. So we know that we're going to have certain things that we'll need to that we'll need to pay. So we go in with ideas that we need to develop alternative revenue streams. So for instance, hosting events, selling merchandise, employing digital marketing, um, distributing content to, to other markets that might not be their primary market. And because the station's product is their content, they can sell this not only to not only within its footprint, but they can also sell it outside of the traditional footprint, so outside of South Africa, if there's interest in another market. If you think about the BBC in the UK, they're an excellent example of this um, because the BBC sells their content all over. A lot of the community radio stations in South Africa runs a thing called the BBC Minute on their stations. And that content comes from the BBC in the UK. Another example of this would be that, um, I don't know if you remember, but there was a point where 947 had content on air from the USA, from Ryan Seacrest. They literally played content pieces of his radio work. So this was an additional income for Ryan Seacrest. Like many commercial businesses, radio stations are dependent on consumers, aka listeners. Without listeners, a radio station cannot exist. They are dependent on customers or clients, so they need to sell advertising. They need sponsors, donors, people who want to partner with them. They have stakeholders, so in case of a state-owned enterprise, and they might have shareholders in the case of privately or commercially owned radio stations. Before we discuss the difference between commercial radio and state broadcasters, can you name five commercial radio stations? Think about it in your head. I've mentioned um, one or two already in this class. And as we said, there are 22 of them within South Africa. Um, I want you to think about this and be able to answer this yourself. But if I were to give you five examples, it'll be 947, 5FM, Metro FM, East Coast Radio, KFM, so there's already five. Okay, and the list goes on and on. I'm going to play a few clips now, and then I want you to think about these stations, and I want you to tell me who you think they are. So um, which station is it that I'm playing the content from? So starting from this one. Yeah, I still, I still stand by that. I'm very proud of myself that I've been able to pronounce Abeja. Uh, personally, I think it's a beautiful name, but the people of PE, they don't seem to think so. Our question this morning is, okay, PE, they're going to have a negotiation. The mayor's put in a formal application to not have the name changed from PE, uh, saying it doesn't relate to the people, saying the people don't even know what this word means and nobody can really confirm. And we're like, okay, but what are you driving past every day that you think should be changed? Is it your street name, you know? Maybe you, love, you live on Jan van Riebeck Avenue instead of Jan Smart's Avenue. Yeah, they, they, that's a great one. Van Riebeck Avenue. I think in Edenvale, yeah. Van Riebeck Avenue still exists. Come on, change that. 100%. But we yeah, don't live on Van Riebeck Avenue. Do the people that live on Van Riebeck Avenue, are they cool with go? No, it's Babeja Avenue now. <laughs> but I think this uh, just makes sense if we look at it in light of the fact that a, a lot of um, Khoisan activists and, um, you know, the people who just are saying that the Khoisan language and the people of the Khoisan have not been uh, as included yeah. in a whole lot of things in this country. Very the true. fact that, um, you know, the, the language, uh, Khoi has been recognized as an official language is just not enough. That there's so much of their heritage that is not being acknowledged it's in our a, country. It's a, it's, a, it's a global consequence of, 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 of coming to take over. It's uh, Native Americans, Native Australians, Native South Africans. Uh, you know what I mean? It's, a, it's a rough. 
what's your take? The name change that has happened in uh, PE, some people are saying it's already called Bai, um, which for me doesn't really hold any, any special no, that, meaning. That's a, that, it means a bay. That's a nickname. So then I go, don't don't come with nicknames. Come with yeah, serious. Might as well call it the Windy City, which was one of its nicknames. Also, you don't name your city just for you. You name your city for tourism. You name your city for a number of reasons. You name your city for history. Now mm-hmm. you don't want for the rest of history. Bye. Mm-mm. Relax. And you've told us what the history is of Port Elizabeth. It's the wife of a, an old colonial leader, mm. Elizabeth Donkin, mm. after Rufain Donkin. Why? Why is she still being commemorated? Mm. So I'm quite happy with these names being changed. It's what we should change them to. Um, and I understand, celebrate the Khoi culture, but what are the other names and other things? And I was saying the statue of Louis Bort outside Parliament, put it in a museum. I want you to think about this, Dave, while we go to traffic. Julia is, is, is standing by. Which radio station do you think that is? So here's the second clip. It is a double whammy mm. win-win. Mm. You get to find out if your friends are really, really your friends. You put them to the test, and the reward is that you get to win your share of 50,000 rand. It's our Call a Friend competition. We are asking you to find that friend that you can trust unconditionally. So yesterday, I decided that I would show you how easy it is. You don't were, don't you, laugh, you were, Sky. You were so confident. You really really yeah. Like, yeah. To the point that uh, even John Marie does on social media, I was like, come, let's, let's quickly um, video this. I'll show everyone how easy it is. So I phone the Greek. I understand it's a work, but still. First time puts a phone. Down. Anyway, go watch. It did not turn out very well. It will make your day, that video. I think it's on a, is it on our Instagram page? It's on it's on our Instagram page on uh, Darren, Kerry, oh, and Sky. Yeah. It's on the page um, and it links to, to the to the IG I movie. I got so rejected. I watch, don't even... watch the whole movie. It's fun. And I still, I've got no idea why. He just was like, oh, could you move, you know? And I was like, why? Yeah, so what, I mean, I was watching that video and I was thinking, mm. what if you were broken down? What, what if, yeah, what exactly. If, what if you needed him? Yeah. You need to he phone my sister. Maybe this yeah, there we go. I this need to phone my sister. Yeah, quite right. Now, yeah, this is also, I'm very, but if you, however. <laughs> I didn't think the Greek would drop the ball so hard. Hey? Yeah. But this, so he's like, you know, how's it work? And it points is this. That's why the Greeks never work. Someone, you, that's why they have no rugby team. Just phone someone <laughs> who's not going to tell you they're at work. Find someone who's going to actually answer your call because it's worth cash money. Correct. And if you want to know how not to do it, mm. go to our Instagram page yeah. and watch me get rejected three times. Basically, you need that person who's going to walk out of a conference call to take your call. Yes. Yes. Mm. 100%. So that's the second one. Who do you think that is? Which radio station is that? Let's listen to one more. You can listen to the other two on your own time. Can I tell you, I'm such a failure. I really am. <laughs> I really am. It's like, if you're going to get in trouble, at least get in trouble for good things. Like you've done something cool. Of all the Daft Punk songs, you so, chose the one that literally no one knows. So for those who don't know how radio works, we don't pick the music that plays on radio. There's a whole people upstairs who do, who do that, right? We're not allowed to chop and, chop and change and whatever. But I was like, oh, Daft Punk, you know, they're separating. Let's play one of their songs. And I was going to play one more time. So I go into the system and I find one more time and I drag it across. But instead of dragging one more time, I drag whatever the nonsense this is. What just happened on the radio? Of all the songs that could like be a dedication to Daft Punk breaking up, you chose that one. I think somebody from upstairs just messaged me. I don't even think that that's a radio song. I think that's like a DJ song. It's a B-side. It's not even a single. Verbatim. I got a message from upstairs. <gasps> Do oh, you want to hear no, it? No. Do you want to hear it? Oh, no, I'm so scared. <laughs> what does it say? Morning. Oh, full no. stop. Oh, no, 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 no. Period. Which station are you currently working oh, for? Oh, no. Oh, no. Listen. Daft Punk is separating. If you're sad, I'm so sorry for you. Can, right. yeah. can you scratch the itch at least and just even give us a snippet of one more time? I'll do it later. If you're going to get in trouble, go the full Monty. You know, the whole uh, Hulk. You know, so later I'll play one more time. Okay. Don't one worry. More time. One more time. <laughs> uh, we were talking about bands off air that we really miss that have separated, eh? And this is going to be controversial, but I'm going to say One Direction. Okay. Because how long were they, were they together before they separated? Quite a long time. I okay. mean, years. Then Zayn obviously left, yes. which was, I think, the beginning of the end, the devolution of the group, and then they broke up. And they've all done a really good job of releasing solo music mm-hmm. and their own music, and they've done really well individually, especially Harry Styles, I feel like. But I could do with another One Direction album, where they just come together, do another album. Why not? they wow. got nothing to lose. Okay. Sure. One Direction, I didn't even think about them. 
So bands that have separated, but you wish would just come back, maybe mm -hmm. for a reunion tour, maybe just come back together full time. You know why yeah. not? Yeah. Um, mine is a local one, and I'm gonna say Gangs of Belay. I was Gangs of Belay. Genuinely took the words out of my mouth. I was like, and locally. Gangs of LA. There's genuinely. so many bands in this country, you know, but very few that are really, really good at the level of Gangs of LA. And they were talented not just instrumentally, but also vocally. They were just really good, man. So I wish Gangs of LA would come back. And really nice humans as well. We really get nice the privilege guys. of meeting a lot of people in the South African music industry. And sometimes you meet people and you're like, oh, I wish I hadn't ever met them because they're quite mean. Uh, whereas Gangs of LA, that all, every single one of them, such nice dudes, really down to earth, super sincere, really mm. cool. And it's like, I don't know why they're separated because they're all still within music. Yeah. You know, they all producing work in music and, and some and session yeah. musicians. Mm -hmm. uh, what about, what about people of our generation? Black Eyed Peas. Are they broken up? Of course. Black Eyed Peas no longer together. What? Hey, hey, hey. Guys, Black Eyed Peas for me too, eh? Okay, and then that was the third clip. So, who do you think that is? So that was a few different sounds from commercial radio stations um, within South Africa. What is the purpose of a commercial radio station? The purpose of a commercial radio station is to deliver a profit in the same way that a business would. A commercial radio station is literally a business and universal business principles are applied, particularly in terms of things like management and operations. So how I would explain um, the role of a station manager within a radio station is similar to the role of a managing director at, um, in a business, in the sense of that a station manager should set business targets and implement strategic actions that will position the station in such a way that they are able to gain an advantage over other radio stations. Stations are fighting for time with their listeners, so they must have a clearly defined offering designed to attract and sustain their listeners. It's extremely easy for a listener to change a station. I mean, it, it normally takes one button and then you're on a different station. So as you can imagine, radio is a very competitive space. So radio stations will carefully manage their resources to deliver the best possible product and will aim to develop new competencies and revenue streams at all times to make a profit. This brings us to deregulation and liberalization. When we refer to deregulation, we mean the government withdrawal of a number of rules and laws that have been imposed on a particular industry. So things that have been there that the government um, is withdrawing. That government may have had a number of reasons to regulate a particular industry in the past, but chosen to shift to a less regulated environment in terms of the media, specifically to promote healthy competition and growth. Deregulation also establishes a more credible image of the industry in the minds of the citizens. Liberalization refers to when the government relaxes its laws and policies in order to reflect a more free market approach to commerce and trade. In the case of media specifically, this involves the government allowing a wide range of parties to apply for radio licenses and enabling applicants um, to obtain licenses for a far greater variety of content formats. So for instance, religious or cultural programming. It may also involve the government distributing the types of ownerships of different radio stations um, more widely across different companies and associations. So the government becoming more liberal in its laws and policies, in our case, with regards to specifically radio licenses or content formats. And South Africa has followed a steady path of deregulation and liberalization since the 1990s. The number of radio stations operating under a commercial license has risen steadily. This began in 2006 with the privatization of six radio stations owned and operated by the SABC. And these stations were 947 in Joburg, Chakaran in Midrand, East Coast in Durban, KFM in Cape Town, OFM in the Free State, and Algo FM in Kaiberga, previously known as PE. The process of privatization meant that these stations could be bought by groups of people with financial investors funding them to be owned and operated as commercial entities. 
the SABC, under the Ministry of Communications, sold off these stations um, to parties with majority of black stakeholders for more than 500 million rand. The following year, eight more commercial radio licenses were granted to broadcast in Johannesburg, Cape Town and Durban. These were geared towards formats that would attract black audiences at the time, as this majority group was underrepresented in the media landscape. Some of these we know today as Heart FM, previously known as P4 Radio in Cape Town, Kai FM in Joburg, YFM in Joburg, Cape Talk in Cape Town, Gazi FM in KZN, and Classic 1027 in Melrose Arch in Johannesburg. The reasoning behind the commercialization of once public owned stations and the granting of new licenses is based on two aspects. The radio choices available to the public are increased, creating a more democratic landscape that satisfies a wide variety of tastes. And secondly, a wider variety of choices generate competition among stations, which drives the economy and improves content quality as more stations will develop specific positions in the market by refining their content to attract specific audiences. South Africa has three major contenders in the commercial radio space, named Kahiso Media, Prime Media Broadcasting, and African Media Entertainment, or AME. Together with various shareholders, these organizations own, control, and manage stakes in 11 commercial radio stations, operating in five different provinces around South Africa. The SABC also operates three commercially designed although still government-owned radio stations. And these are 5FM, Metro FM, and Good Hope FM, which is in Cape Town. According to the RAM figures, um, the largest commercial radio stations in South Africa in 2018 were Metro FM, Gagazi FM, and 947. Looking at the last RAM releases from April 2019 up until March 2020, the largest commercial radio stations in South Africa were Metro FM, Gagazi FM, and Jacaranda FM. So it's changed a little bit. And that brings us to the end of the first lesson in commercial radio. What you need to do for me for homework is to listen to an hour of radio from a radio station in the Kahiso Media Group, an hour in the Prime Media Group, and an hour in the AME group, okay? Any radio stations within those three. So all in all, you're gonna to listen to three hours worth of radio. Then I want you to fill in a media log to keep track of your listening, because that's something you're going to send to me. So have a listen to all of those, and please um, email your answers through to me within a week, okay? And with that, I say goodbye until the next lesson, we will continue in this commercial radio landscape and start the conversations around commercial station management.